Despite the crazy PC hardware market right now, this PC is actually fully in stock, it's not at a ridiculous price point, and it has a pretty decent upgrade path as well. Let's have a look. Hey, welcome to Zach's Tech Turf. Today we are going to be deep diving into my latest creation here. This gaming PC cost me only $550 to build, and yes, I did buy this all pretty recently, so this build guide is still very relevant. After we talk about all these parts, of course we're gonna benchmark the heck out of it. All of that though, after a quick word from today's sponsor. Today's video is sponsored by Corsair, and specifically their new K60 RGB Pro Mechanical Gaming Keyboard. The K60 RGB Pro is a full-size board rocking the new Cherry Viola Switches, which are new entry-level mechanical switch which replaces rubber domes and hybrid solutions while still allowing keyboards like the K60 RGB Pro to come in at lower price points. These are also rocking per-key RGB with a ton of customization possibilities using Corsair's IQ software. This brushed aluminum finish makes this keyboard look way more expensive than it actually is and you can buy one for yourself by clicking that first link down in the description. So just for some disclaimers, I'll have links to everything I talk about down in the description and those will be affiliate links by the way so I do get a small kickback. And also if you want to see the step-by-step -step building process of this PC, I'll have the Twitch live stream link down in the description as well. I stream over on twitch.tv slash zaxtechturf every Tuesday and Thursday at 8 p.m. Eastern time, and I build every PC you see on the channel over there. It's a pretty good time. With those out of the way, the CPU that I have here today is the Intel i3-9100, which is a four-core and only four-threaded chip, unfortunately. No hyper-threading here, and it has a max boost frequency of actually 4.2 gigahertz, which is pretty high, as you would expect from Intel. This 9100 is rocking Intel's integrated graphics, and if you're copying this build, I would highly recommend switching over to the 9100F, which doesn't have integrated graphics in order to save some money. The only reason I'm using the normal 9100 is because I originally bought this CPU for a Hackintosh project which didn't require a dedicated graphics card, failed miserably on that project, by the way, I don't even wanna talk about it. But yeah, just go with the 9100F if you are copying this build. Next up, we have the motherboard, and this is the Asus Prime B365M-A, which I picked up brand new on Amazon for just a measly $68, as this is a very budget motherboard, but it's all we really need. This one is micro ATX, which is perfect for our case selection, which we'll talk about in just a minute. It has four RAM slots and two M.2 ports. So with this being only $68 and the 9100 only being $110 when I picked it up, that puts the total price for the CPU and motherboard combo at less than $180. The only reason I went with Intel here is because we all know that the PC hardware market is completely screwed up right now and like virtually every Ryzen chip is out of stock. You could definitely swap out the CPU and motherboard combo for something like a Ryzen 3 3100 and B450 motherboard for around the same price when things do come back into stock. Or you could also swap this out for a newer Intel chip like the 10100F with an LGA 1200 motherboard and that would actually be a better idea because those newer i3 CPUs actually have hyper-threading. Basically, what I'm just trying to say is that you have a ton of options for the CPU and motherboard combo if you are thinking about copying this build. This is just what I personally went with, but there are definitely some more viable options out there. This entire build can be paired with those different CPU and motherboard combos that I just mentioned. There's a lot of flexibility here. Moving along the parts list though, we get to the RAM, and this is the Crucial Ballistics 2x8 gigabyte kit clocked at 3,200 megahertz, and I ended up paying $70 for it. Here, you actually could have saved a decent amount of money if you just bought a cheaper black version, but that obviously wouldn't have looked as baller as this. For the SSD, we once again have the Intel 660p NVMe drive with 500 gigabytes, and I promise we're almost through my stock of these, so you'll see a different NVMe drive on the channel here soon. In case you've been living under a rock, over on our Discord server, our deals god Dr. Zoomer found these drives for only $33 brand new on Amazon Prime Day over on the B&H website, so a bunch of us bought a ton of them, that's why you've been seeing them so much. The deals god himself saves us an absolute ton of money over in that ZTT Discord server, you can turn notifications on for just his deal postings, by the way, which are anywhere from like one to four per day. And if you're looking to save some money on your next PC build or PC flip, that's exactly what I would recommend doing. The Discord is linked down in the description, by the way. Also linked down in the description is the graphics card, and this is the MSI Mech OC RX 5500 XT with eight gigabytes of VRAM, and I ended up paying $180 for this one brand new. I've explained before that the 5500 XT is still a somewhat decent option these days if you get the eight gigabyte version, that cheaper four gigabyte 
8GB version actually performs slightly worse than the RX 580, which makes it a tougher sell than this 8GB version. And as we're about to see in the benchmarking section, this card paired with the i3-9100 performs very well in 1080p for even the demanding titles. Following that, we have the power supply, and this is once again just an EVGA 500BR, which I picked up on EVGA's Midweek Madness sale on the EVGA B-Stock website. It's originally rocking all black cables, but for a bill with my favorite color scheme, I absolutely had to throw on some nicer black and red cable extensions. You could go with a ton of options here. I actually already had this kit from a previous build that I didn't need, but feel free to go with any brand or color scheme that you personally like. And finally, for the last core component of this build, we have the case, and big thanks to Deepco for sending out their new McCube 110 white. The McCube 110 should look familiar as it looks very similar to their classic full tower McCube 550, but this is the newer and smaller micro ATX version, which I'm honestly a huge fan of. I was so excited to work inside this case. It's got a nice and clean open design, a solid PSU shroud to hide my sub average cable management in the back. It's got a magnetic and tilting temper glass side panel. And most importantly, it only costs 50 bucks. This is honestly about as clean as it gets for a $50 case, but nobody freak out. This obviously is not the best case choice if you want to prioritize airflow. Obviously, please don't think you're a genius by commenting down below that this isn't the best airflow case. You guys know I get triggered by that. The PC building community is like a bunch of vultures when someone uses a case that doesn't have a perfect airflow set up with a full mesh panel up at the front. So if you're personally looking for a case that prioritizes airflow, feel free to just go with something else. In the benchmarking section of this video, however, which is coming up soon, by the way, you'll see in the upper left hand corner that our temperatures stayed nice and cool. And this case is perfectly fine in my opinion. Speaking of airflow though, we get to some more extra parts throughout the case and the first one is the CPU cooler and big shout out to Arctic for overnighting this CPU cooler literally the day before the Twitch live stream. This is the Arctic Freezer 34 Esports Duo, the red and black edition and I've said this before but this cooler provides an absolute ton of price to performance. For around $50 not on a sale you're getting two 120 millimeter PWM Bionics fans pushing and pulling against this super clean and all black heatsink and it'll keep even a much beefier CPU than our 9100 nice and chilly. Arctic also sent over some of their 120 millimeter Bionics airflow fans as well. Once again, these were mainly chosen for the aesthetics, but knowing Arctic, they perform above the competition as well. You definitely don't need to select these aesthetic only choices with this build to receive the exact same performance, but you guys know how I roll at this point. I do want to mention real quickly that I wish I would have went with the all white version of this CPU cooler. Obviously this looks baller AF, but I think I could have made it look a bit better. I'm not a huge fan of how black and red the center part of this build is, and I can only imagine that if the CPU heatsink was all white, maybe even keep the red and black fans on there, this build would have been taken to a whole nother level. Just a note if you are copying this build. Speaking of which, here is the entire parts list for this build. And as you can see, I actually paid less than the $550 for it, but that'll give you some extra room for higher prices with today's market. Just remember that if you clicked every affiliate link today, you may see slightly higher prices, but as always, make sure you put in the work, do your due diligence, and be patient when trying to snipe the good deals. Jumping right into the benchmarking section, we'll start with the new Call of Duty Black Ops Cold War and I decided to chase that higher FPS assuming you're using a 144 hertz monitor with this build. So I had to knock the settings down to 1080p and low and with that I got a solid FPS average of 134. All right, so it's now Call of Duty time. Apparently there's like a new war zone. There's still, there's campers everywhere in Call of Duty, man. Look, oh my. Mm. I was literally just talking to a buddy about Call of Duty the other day. And he said that there's not a lot of campers anymore in Call of Duty. And, like, that's literally all there is. I can't believe I just killed that guy. I, I don't even care that you killed me. Did you see that? But enough about the campers. The As you can see, the CPU and GPU utilization is actually pretty balanced. Both sitting at around 80 to 90%. The temperatures... Look at all these guys! Look at them all camping here! I'm gonna kill them all. I just killed their entire team. I'm done. I'm done. Do you guys need to see more? Look, they're all dead. I killed every single one of them. Their entire team is done. Game over. Next up was the also brand new Assassin's Creed Valhalla and using the benchmarking tool in 1080p medium settings, I got 63 frames per second. Remember to keep an eye for both the utilizations and temperatures in that upper left hand corner. Following that was Rainbow Six Siege and just like always using that built in benchmarking tool in 1080p with very high settings, I got a very high FPS average of 232. Next up was Counter-Strike Global Offensive and here in 1080p Pro settings, I had zero problems headshotting everyone on the entire map while I was rocking an FPS average of 223. All right, Counter-Strike time, not even going to do a warm-up, just going to come swing in here with the AWP and just 
It's all day, man. Whenever I start off with a nice kill like that, that's how you know it's gonna be a good day, man. Oh, look at this guy. Oh, it's gonna be a good day, I'm telling you. However, with that being said, it's definitely not gonna be a good day for this chicken. Forgot. Hey, dude, I'm trying to kill the chicken. What's up, dude? Sit down, Steve. Steve Harvey? Oh my god, was that actually Steve Harvey? I mean, my lobbies, like I keep saying, are only eSport pros, and... See? Steve Harvey! He must be a pro! You know, it's just not every day that someone gets to say that they played Counter-Strike with... Steve Harvey, you're killing me here, man! Alright, I no longer want to say I play with him. I want to kill him. But that wasn't him. That was some other eSport pro. Where is Steve Harvey, though, man? I need to kill him at least one time. Is this him? Is that him? Nope. I really don't want to quit until I kill him one more time. Was that him? No. I'm killing literally everybody on this map except Steve Hall. Oh my god, it's Steve Hall. I'm done. I'm done. After that, I tested Rogue Company. Might have headshotted everyone on this map at least twice with this one, honestly. And in 1080p with medium settings, including that 150 FPS cap that I still can't remove, I got an FPS average of 146. After that was Borderlands 3 and using the benchmarking tool in 1080p medium settings, I got 86. Fortnite followed up after that. Are you guys enjoying that I'm not starting with this game every single time anymore, by the way? For this one in 1080p and pro settings, I got a 146 FPS average. And finally, for the last gaming benchmark, we have Valorant and in 1080p with high settings, I got a pretty high FPS average of 195. I just don't understand why they give us a warm-up time in Valorant. Like, some people like me just naturally come to the party warmed up. Just, just, it's just that easy. Just show warmed up. Just show up. Warmed up show up warmed up it's like i'd rather have my advantage of just showing up warmed up now they're all warmed up is this guy gonna peek <laughs> don't try to peek me people in my new office building are probably like who is the new guy that constantly yells sit down and who is he yelling at? Why is he yelling headshot? Because I keep getting headshots. And then just like always, I put this $550 PC through a 3D Mark Times by Benchmark and it ended up cranking out a final score of 4,462. I'm sure if you're building a PC around this similar price point, you're gonna wanna see some more options for parts and whatnot. So feel free to click that video that's on the screen now. And just like always, I hope you enjoyed this video.